So, hi everyone, uh, I'm Alexander Tungan, and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, transdifferentiation. So, I want you all to imagine being able to take any cell in your body and reprogramming it completely into another cell that's needed to, for example, replace or repair a damaged organ. Well, we could do this with better understanding this process. Um, so, current um, medical therapies use this idea of being able to take a differentiated cell, for example, this skin cell, and um, converting them back into pluripotent or undifferentiated cells and then in, in, in the cell culturing and growing them and then differentiating them into any other cell type that you would, would, that you would like. And so what transdifferentiation, we can do with transdifferentiation is completely uh, skip over this process of pluripotency or undifferentiatedness and go from directly from a differentiated cell type into another differentiated cell type. And so this could uh, open up an alternate path to uh, repairing damaged organs, for example. And so the model organism that we're going to use is the C. elegans, uh, which is found as both hermaphrodites as, as well as males. And uh, this organism, which is only a one millimeter long, has approximately 959 cells and is the first animal to, to have its entire genome sequence, which is a really powerful tool that we can use because now we know what uh, each cell can do and where it goes. And uh, this is why this organism is really uh, uh, ideal to use. Also, uh, there are a lot of um, processes that are in the C. elegans that are also found in humans, which is why we can convert uh, from our uh, ideas and concepts that we find in C. elegans to humans. And so uh, the reason uh, why we can use C. elegans as well as model organism is because in C. elegans what we can do is actually tell specific cells to uh, transdifferentiate, unlike uh, other animals. For example, so we can't do this in mice or we can't do it in just in a regular cell culture, but we can do it in these C. elegans using this process of heat shocking the worms. And so what I mean by heat shocking is that you have this heat shock promoter that's fused with a specific transcription factor, which is a, a sort of gene that is specific, for example, in this case, to the intestine. And when we fuse this together, what we're doing is, once we heat shock the worms, this uh, heat shock promoter is allowing this intestine-specific gene to be expressed throughout the entire worm in every cell. And uh, what we see normally is that uh, right here is are the green and cyan colors in this gut region of the C. elegans. And this uh, green fluorescing color is brought about by this L2, um, this L2 uh, intestine-specific uh, gene, as well as the IFB2 intestine-specific uh, gene. And so uh, by heat shocking them, what we're doing is we're allowing all the cells in the organism to become intestinal cells. And what we see visually, since these cells are becoming intestinal cells, are we expect to see these type of um, fluorescing uh, and in, in the cells that have actually turned into intestinal cells. And so um, over here, um, the pharynx and the gonads, the somatic gonads, transdifferentiate into the intestine, as we have seen uh, previously in, in the lab. And so we're wondering why this is. So over here, you'll see this is, this is the entire C. elegans uh, showing this cyan fluorescing protein that is intestine specific. And over here, this region uh, being the somatic gonad, which includes the, um, the uterus, the, these, uh, the gonad arms of the C. elegans, uh, as well as in the hermaphrodites, the vulva. And uh, over here you'll see the pharynx, and we see that there is uh, this intestine-specific markers in the pharynx as well as the somatic gonad. And so we're wondering why this is. And so we looked for a gene that was specific to um, uh, these, uh, these areas, the gut, the somatic gonad, as well as the pharynx. And we found that FA4 is one gene that is expressed in, the pharynx, in all three of these, the pharynx, the intestine, and the somatic gonad, which is why we're looking into this specific, um, this specific gene. Um, so what we're going to use to study this gene is this process called RNA interference of FA4. And what this does is that it knocks down the gene, so that way the production of protein is decreased. And so these uh, E. coli that are fused with double-stranded uh, RNA that has compl that's complementary to the FA4 gene's target mRNA, 
is fed on by the C. elegans. And what happens is that uh, in the C. elegans, this silencing complex does exactly what it's supposed to do, which is silence this uh, area of the gene that it's targeting, in this case being FOB4. And it completely does not allow, well, not completely, but it does not allow the production of the FOB4 protein, which knocks, its, um, which knocks it down in the animal, its expression down in the animal. And so uh, over here you'll see that the percentage of worms that had this fall for that had this um, cyan fluorescing gut marker in the protein ha in the pharynx had increased in the males as well as the females, which shows that uh, after knocking down this fall for gene that we uh, this fall for gene that we saw that um, there was an, actually an increase in the percentage of worms that had this pharyngeal gut expression going on. Uh, we also saw that um, in the in the pharynx another gut marker. Um, being expressed as well in higher and higher percentages in the worms. In the posterior as well as the anterior bulbs, um, we saw that there was an increase after uh, in, when we looked at the FOB4 depleted worms. And um, the advantage about using um, this GFP, which is a green fluorescing marker, is that we can actually count the specific nuclei within uh, the pharynx and see, and what we see is that there is actually an increased number of nuclei within each animal rather than just being a general um, uh, higher percentage in the animals that have, are expressing this GFP marker. But we, what we do see as well is that um, there is a decrease in the percentage of worms that have this um, somatic gonad expression in the males, but there is an increase in the hermaphrodites. And so this is uh, one area that we're going to have to specifically look into more. And so what we can conclude from this is that the FA4, uh, FA4 is not necessary for ectopic gut differentiation in the pharynx and the uterus. This is because what we're seeing is that there's an increased uh, uh, percentage of worms that have this cyan and green gut markers in the pharynx uh, of these FA4 depleted worms, uh, which lets us know that after knocking down this FA4 uh, gene, there is a decreased uh, production of the FOB4 protein itself, uh, which is causing um, the animal to actually have more cyan and green gut markers in the pharynx, which lets us know that the animal is now more susceptible to uh, turning into uh, intestinal cells. What we also see is that uh, the cyan gut marker is uh, is increasing in the uterus, but not in the vast deference, which is. Uh, of the cell, of the same cell lineage as the uterus, but instead is in the males. And so, uh, in our future projects, what we're going to be looking is this change and why that is happening, as well as looking into other genes that are responsible for preventing this transdifferentiation of uh, the pharyngeal cells in the cilium organism. What we also saw that was really interesting was that um, these over here you'll see this entire. Uh, C. elegans is expressing this cyan protein that is intestine specific in uh, what to be what looks like the muscles of the C. elegans. And so now uh, we're looking into the possibility that these muscle cells are actually have the susceptibility to become intestinal cells. And so that's my project and I just want to thank my mentor Missy for being there throughout the entire summer, as well as my advisor, uh, Professor Rothman, for uh, allowing me to join his amazing lab, as well as the Rothman lab. I'd like to thank them as well for their support, as well as um, everyone involved in making this Eureka program possible. Thank you.